Welcome to Crawl Space. I'm Tim here today with Lance in the Crawl Space Studios in Wormtown. Lance, how are you today? I am doing so, so well. How are you today? Two so's. Yeah. Well, on the way in, because it's snowing, and um, we're like, you and I are like the uh, United States Postal Service uh, through rain, snow, sleet, whatever, you know, that whole slogan that I don't know. That's you and I. So we made it our, made our way into the Crawl Space Studio in Wormtown, and it came uh, to pass that uh, the roads are actually very uh, well maintained because the worms out there with uh, with a shovel in each one of his little hands. Anyway, this episode today, Lance, that we have is with uh, a new friend of ours. Her name is Jenny Carreri, and her sister was 23 when she was murdered in uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. In uh, March on March second, nineteen ninety six. Yeah, her twin sister Jody Lacornu uh, was a uh, senior at Towson University, and she had been out the night before. And uh, yeah, March second, nineteen ninety six. And Jenny has made it her life mission to find out what happened because, as you hear uh, the her story unfold, like the frustration and the uh, like, the angst is so palatable. Yeah, and it's it's unfortunate. Jenny suffers from anxiety and you can hear it in in her voice really um when when she speaks and uh I can imagine it it being com- like hell. Uh losing your sister like that and they were so close, uh, identical twins. So I, I can imagine the the effect that it would have, and it's it's just terrible. Yeah, and, and we're we're talking about an area that's really close to uh, Baltimore, so the circumstances of her murder appear to be just on the surface uh, a robbery, or some like perhaps uh, a, a, some sort of drug deal that that went awry. But there are details that are not consistent with what you would imagine uh, a drug deal or a robbery going wrong. Because what what ultimately happened, if you're thinking about this as a robbery or a drug deal going wrong, what what transpired after it went wrong doesn't fit the um, doesn't fit the mo of of anything you and I have experienced talking to people like this, talking to law enforcement and and uh, and investigative journalists. Usually, something else happens. Usually, the perpetrator will run away, not not finish the job in such a public, deliberate fashion. And I want to give out a phone number here if, you, if there are any tips out there. The phone number is 410-200-6284. Again, it's 410-200-6284. And you can check out justice4jody.com, and that's four with the number four. And here on justiceforjody.com, it says there is plenty of compelling evidence in this case, including multiple eyewitnesses, a description of the killer, a description of the killer's vehicle, forensic evidence, fingerprints, surveillance video, viable suspects, a reward of $100,000 that's been offered, and yet no conviction. It's been nearly 25 years. And uh, so that's that's on the Ju- Justice for Jody page. That was from uh, written by uh, Dr. Oz, I guess, or at least his show. Jenny has done a lot of publicity, which is amazing. And she's uh, been on Dr. Oz, and she's been very persistent with these billboards that uh, have been uh, placed around Baltimore County. I was going to say, when you were running through all the reasons why this case should be solved, the car, the description, the forensic... On top of all that are are what is what you were just saying. She's been on TV. She's she's done the billboard. She's done numerous podcasts. She's done numerous interviews, and she's just never stopped putting herself in the public eye. So I know the area in which this happened probably has a lot of violence uh, right outside of Baltimore, but I don't think there's ever there. I, I think there's only been a few cases where where one individual who's related to the victim has done something with such. Um, with such gusto and and that the her face is always out there. Okay, so we are going to bring you the interview right now. Just also want to let you know about uh, a couple of live shows that we're doing in 2020 in March. Lance, we're doing one in Boston and one in Philadelphia, and they are with our pals at True Crime Obsessed, Patrick Hines and Jillian Pensavale, and our friend Maggie Freeling as well, and we're talking about the disappearance of Maura Murray. Right, because the live show went so well back in October when we 
uh, joined them at the Bell House in Brooklyn. They decided to include us uh, in their tour uh, coming up in 2020, and we're going to start at Royale in Boston. That's on Tremont Street, 279 Tremont Street on Friday, March 20th. And then the next night is going to be March 21st, Saturday, 8 p.m. at Underground Arts in Philadelphia. So we're going to be in the city of brotherly love. Can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I promise I won't uh, be as angry on stage as I look in the promo photos. <laughs> the no guarantee. Don't guarantee <laughs> anything because... Uh, we all know how relentless uh, Patrick and Jillian can be, and we all know how uh, thin-skinned you can be sometimes. <laughs> oh, man. Just kidding. Okay, so hope to see you all there. And Lance, something incredibly exciting to share with our listeners. Our entire archive of episodes is back on the public feed, all for free, for good. So check it out, all of Crawl Space. We started this podcast back in February of 2017, so we just added back like 80 episodes or something like that. And not to mention Missing Maura Murray, all the back catalog, the entire archive is back online. So go check those out. Go binge. And I hope you enjoy this episode with Jenny Carreri. And please check out Justice for Jody, the number four. And uh, follow Jenny on Twitter. And thank you very much for listening. Welcome to Crawl Space, Jenny Carreri. How are you tonight, Jenny? Oh, I'm doing good now that I'm with you guys. That's awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your night to join us here. Um, in the past, I don't know, two or three weeks, we've had all of the superstars, the, uh, the you know, the, the relentless rock stars of, of this whole uh, true oh. crime genre on. We had uh, Kelsey German on. We had Sarah Turney. <sighs> now we have you. I feel like I feel like we're uh, I don't know. We, it's like Christmas coming early for we us. Should all, we should all get together. We could well, like all get together like you were talking about. Yeah, and we had Bill Thomas on too, just um, like a month or six weeks ago, and uh, we had planned to have you four um, to the American yes. Crime Festival in uh, in November, but um, obviously that didn't happen. So that panel with the four of you that was going to be moderated by Mike Morford, um, that that didn't uh -huh. happen. So we should really you know revisit that idea and see if we can make that happen. Let's do it before summer. <laughs> All right. Oh, for sure. Yeah, We'll put a call out to the people. This is a call to action. If anyone knows uh, a good location, a nice intimate venue, feel free to uh, ping us. Oh, that'd be great. Okay, I'm on it. So, Jenny, you are so busy with your pursuit for justice in your sister's murder, and you recently did a show with Oxygen. It's called Relentless with Kate Snow. I just watched it. Well done. Great job. Um, Thank you. Our, our friends at Oxygen did it again. Um, so to, yes. how was that? What was that like? It was amazing. It They were, I mean, they, they did such a great job. And we started, they reached out to me, Kate Snow, I believe it was one of her assistants early on in March. They were talking about this, the, the show and that it was based on solved cases but they really wanted to get oxygen to do jody's case so i didn't even think that it would happen since all of the shows like i said were resolved solved and when they called me back i was really excited about it because any chance i can get her story out there i just jump on it no matter what and so they i mean it, it was a lot of work but just amazing the, the crew everybody uh i went i went up there first and met with kate and she was lovely and just i felt like she was my sister she was so sweet and just oh. such such a great person um and just yeah i mean you just felt right so comfortable with her i mean i walked into the room and uh you know they as far as you know what colors you're going to wear and all this and and we had the same color shirt on and she's like don't worry i'll change and she was just very just very sweet and um yeah so but well, that's nice we were, yeah she was great and we did it we actually did it the interview in new jersey and uh they pick a plate you know a studio and then they came down she didn't come down but her crew came down and interviewed me and my mom and my husband and they were here for, they were here for, I think over a week or so. Cause we did the billboards in the cemetery oh, wow. and they came to my house. 
uh, they did a lot of different, you know, they interviewed David Collins, who's been a huge support for me with in Baltimore, one of the, with WBAL from, for years, he's been really helpful in right. advocating for me. Um, and my lawyer that I had with the lawsuit, they interviewed him and then Steve Janice, who's another reporter. Uh, he's with the real news network. He was with Fox 45 for a while, but he's been huge. I think, yeah, if, if you guys remember, he was, um, one of the other ones in the show, but they really, they were just great. I mean, the, the producer, Chris, I'm going to pronounce his right, name wrong. Seguilia was just a phenomenal. And I mean, it, it just, yeah. I mean, even though it was, um, uh, you know, sad at times, you know, we're talking and, and, but they, they just made it really just a really, really good experience. And I'm really grateful, like the outcome. And I'm very happy with oxygen. And if they want me to, they, I'll do anything else with them. I'm wondering how you managed to muster up the energy to do this. Uh, it's your your sister was tragically murdered in 1996, and you again. I keep using the word relentless. That was obviously the name of the show on Oxygen, but you just like you motivated me. Like you watch that, and there's this motivation, just like the strength that you have. How have you done that I over think so many line. years? Is it <laughs> how, do you, how do you reach back and get that? <laughs> I, 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 I sometimes wonder. Um, what did Lester hold? When I did my interview with him, he said something. Some he said something very funny, like um, I don't know. I'm, I'm obsessed, but I mean, it's it's. Oh, I'm just nothing will stop me, and I mean that's good and cannot be good, um, because I'm just, you know, I've just made the decision that I I will go to any lengths to find her killer and 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 the more uh, what's the word um uh, i can't think of the word because it's been a long day the uh, lack of support that i get from baltimore it just motivates me even more you know from the police and everything and um yeah. you know they all like to put out there the police department i've met you know in the governor's office and the county executive you know everybody's behind me and wants to help me but I mean, the bottom line is it's uh, 23 and a half years later and we're still in the same spot. And, you know, with all the investigative, you know, everything I've done over the years, you know, just seeing just things not happen, you know, people that were interviewed that weren't interviewed that they said were interviewed and very upsetting. And it just, keep, you know, I just, I mean, I'm not, I, uh, always doing well. I mean, I'm, I'm falling apart a lot. Um, I struggle with my own personal issues and, and it's been a huge, um, what's the word, uh, stress on my marriage, my family. Um, we were watching the show Friday night with my husband, you know, he was part of it when we watched it and he got upset and stormed out of the room because he's very upset that I, uh, for several reasons, that I that I'm open about my life, what I've been through, and um, I just, you know, made a couple just a couple years ago, made a decision that I mean that I would just be open about what happened. I mean, with the struggles Jody and I had, and um, yeah, you know, things that that had happened when we were growing up, and it's just, um, you know, you spend for me so many years trying to hide so many things with our family and our life and everything. And that it just, it just gets exhausting. And, and this is me. And if people don't like me, then, you know, what can I do? You know, I've struggled and I still struggle, you know? Um, but um, yeah, he doesn't like that all to be out there, but the bottom line is it's 2019 and um, you know, everybody's got some sort of struggles in their life. I, I would think at least some, yeah. um, you know, in their family and, um, so he wasn't yeah. happy about that and he wasn't happy about, cause he told me not to speak to the prisoner and I told him I wouldn't and I did, but that's, you know, what I'm talking about. Like I'll go to any lengths and, um, it's just that I, I don't know, maybe some people might think it's careless, but, um, I, I don't know. It's like, I, I'm not afraid. I mean, I went from this, I mean, for years I was terribly just anxious. I mean, I still struggle with the anxiety, but I was worried, um, you know, with her manner of death and, and just, I mean, I couldn't even be in a room by myself. And, and now it's, it's, 
it's almost like I feel invincible or something like I'm going to go and if somebody's going to try to stop me, you know, um, does that make sense? I, I just, yeah, your, I, your pursuit has given you strength. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. But, um, you know, I mean, it, it, and, and yeah, does, you're, you're, you're like, you're like fueling yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe I should be more cautious. Um, something David Collins said in the interview, cause I didn't see all these interviews about how, you know, if somebody, something about, they're not going to want you around. And I thought, Oh, um, you know, did you see that part? Do you remember that part? Yeah. Said if you, yeah, yeah. 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 But, um, I don't know. I don't, I just don't have that fear. Maybe I should. What do you no, think? No, what do you think? I don't think you should. I mean, <laughs> how many of these other cases that, that we talk about and you've seen and Tim seen that, that just go in one direction because people have been, uh, conservative in their approach and they're afraid to talk about, uh, things that law enforcement doesn't want them to talk about simply right. out of pride. So, <laughs> And and approaching suspects and going to visit someone in prison, I mean, a lot of that I feel, I, you know, and I'm probably, I don't know if I'm like totally wrong on it, but I feel like a lot of that is kind of an unofficial breach of the line between citizen and law enforcement. And that, that line is only there due or mostly there due to pride. And if you if you have the courage to cross it, I, I think people just don't have yeah. a choice in, in, in that in that. Uh, I mean, the bottom situation. line is, is if, if I felt... I mean, this wasn't my plan to be doing all of this, but if, if I felt that it was it, it that if the investigation was if they were working if they were thoroughly investigating everything and and doing everything that I've seen and learned and 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 like I, I wouldn't be doing all these things, going out doing all these things, you know. But it, but it, I just feel like right. Like I need to be doing this and and be all, like pressure on them, you know. And 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 they say that I criticize them and say stuff. I mean, I do. I I mean, but I I don't mean to. But it's I'm angry. I'm upset. I mean, I lost my twin. I've spent all these years without her. Um, yeah. It's it's very hard. I mean, I I've never felt the same. I mean, my my life completely changed that day. And and it's 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 um. You know, I, 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 I never wake up without tons of gratitude, but it's, it's, I'm sad a lot and, and, and angry and, and, and feel that, um, you know, that for me to be active and, and trying to make things happen, you know, I, I think her case definitely still would be sitting in the closet like they told me years ago. Well, I think what you've done in, in, publicizing the case is absolutely remarkable so please oh, keep, keep that up i think i think it's incredible and um you know i think it's natural to butt heads with law enforcement if you're going about um your pursuit of justice like you are and and i don't mean that in a negative way i mean i mean you're ruffling some feathers like you know like you understand that you are and that's fine that's good they need that yeah. And I don't have a mean bone in my body. I mean, I'm actually, you know, like, like I, they, you heard, they call me Jenny the Wimp. Like I'm very nice and kind and a people pleaser and I want to make everybody happy and I don't like conflict, but like really this has just turned me into this just person that I'm like, I am not going to pardon my, you can bleep this out. I'm not going to be fucked with anymore. You know, like I'm done, I'm done. And, um, it just, yeah. it's very frustrating, you know, and, and I just feel like they just say what I want to hear, you know, when, at this point, you know, I just had a meeting a little while ago with them and, and it's, it's just the same. Yeah. Oh, but it's good. like the same That's... thing, you know, it's like, and there's just yep. so much that I've learned and I know, and it just, it just doesn't make sense to me. And then when I have people from like, Every interview I've done, I mean, people all over, people write me letters, people reach out to me on social media. They say, um, this, something's not right. I mean, when I have, I've never had one person say, um, yeah, they're do I, I think everything seems right with this case. I mean, I've never, you know what I mean? I mean, and that's just, that doesn't help, you know, that, that every single, like I said, to get random people from across the country. I mean, I did that, I did this documentary 
for um for France. I've done a few things. France is like obsessed with true crime. I did this documentary, and that's going to come out in December. Uh, I mean, even the people I worked with there. I mean, they're in another country. I mean, it's just what it is. What's not right with the case? I don't know. Can we talk about the um the the actual um you know murder scene a little bit because we we were talking right before we started rolling and um based on your uh the your appearance on on relentless with kate snow i really really loved the the episode but um the animations that they did to to depict um the murder the 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 shot and then how jody drove away um and then the killer followed her and didn't wasn't like speeding like he just he followed her and then parked next to her, got out, mm-hmm. reached in, took something, got back in, and probably put the car in park after it it had hit a curb, and Jody had uh, she was shot through the back, and so she, I think she was uh, not not really moving much, I guess, at that point. Correct. Um, so I, I think, I, yeah, I think that part is really peculiar for uh, for most people. Oh yeah, I mean, from being in the one parking lot to driving across all the lanes with the severed spine and, and him just following her over there and, and sitting at the entrance of the lot while she drove around. And then, you know, to reach once she hit the curb is, I I believe that's probably when she died, but him reaching over her body and putting her car in park. I mean, I just had somebody, another person just reach out to me just the other day. Like there's only one type of person that would put a car in park, uh, um, you know, and this person wants me to call them. So like I said, there's always like people like, this is what it is, you know, like they just think that it's odd. I mean, like, do you thought you think that's odd? Extremely. Yeah. I mean, after, after the initial attack is not, um, a hundred percent successful, it becomes extremely, extremely odd that the follow up happened. Right. What what type of person sees it through so thoroughly? I mean, some people think it, it was a hit. Yeah. I mean, what do you guys do? Yeah. You guys have a thought? I mean, well, is it? A, I mean, would it be like a mistaken hit? I did, was there like connections there? I don't know. I mean, <sighs> it does sound like if you were to read this in like a uh, Scorsese script. It sounds right. like something that would be in a Scorsese, and I'm not. I, I I'm not trying to be funny, but it sounds like something that's like stereotypical. It's not your normal. I mean, like like if it was a robbery and her, they say her window was rolled down. Why didn't he just put the gun up to her and say, "Give me your money"? You know, why shoot her from behind? Follow her with you know people around. You know, even though it was the middle of the night, there was. They said the giant. It was 24 hours. Oh, you know, that was open. There was people at the Boston market unloading the truck. I mean, there was de- clearly people around. And w- you still don't know what he took out of the car. I- if anything, is is it confirmed that he took something out of the car? It's so bizarre the way that they've said it over the years. Or like something was taken out of her car, um, but there was no purse in the car. So did they, so did she have a purse? I'm sure she did have some, you know, a purse or maybe her wallet, um, you know, something with her, but they said that, that, that wasn't, something was taken out, but that wasn't there. They had never been specific about the purse. So, so maybe it could have been more, I guess. Yeah. I mean, they were just, they're very vague about it. And then they said, um, the phone, well, well, they didn't say this, but the, she had that bag phone. My parents got her because they were really worried about her being in Baltimore. And um, so then later on, they said that that was missing too. So that's a lot to grab, um, right? I mean, they grabbed the phone, the per. I mean, I don't know. Were they perhaps saying something like that as a way to bait the the perpetrator? I mean, it's it's hard to say. All we know is what they tell us. So that's why, because they won't show us any records. I mean, they won't even show us the original police report. And what made me really mad in seeing that show, and and, and I love their, their PI spokesman. He's a really nice guy. And um, a lot of people say he's a patsy. He just like, he just says what, you know, he, he he's such a, like a really nice guy. But I mean, I think he just says what they 
want him to say, you know, and, and he said, you know, when asked, you know, with the crime scene photos, why didn't they put out more stuff early on? And, and, and what he said was they hold things out in an investigation. So they don't put a description of the vehicle. Like, I mean, they do that all the time on TV. Like somebody, a child is missing. There's something going, they always have a description of a vehicle, right? Like that, I just thought that was so odd. They never had a description of the killer's vehicle. They didn't put the photos out till twenty years later to the to the media. Like they wouldn't yeah. put them out. But the description of the suspect's car, Jody's car, like they they didn't put it out till twenty years later. And they said, "Oh, it's because we hold things in an investigation." But maybe that would have helped early on, right? Sure. Right. What's the time frame on that? You know, like. You th- maybe after like a year, no one said, hey, what if we try this? Right. It took 20 years. But like the description of if they just they, they put out a picture of what was described of this BMW. It seems like that would have jogged somebody's brain early on. Don't you think if they put the picture of that Absolutely. out early on? So it's, it's just very odd. They won't even give my family the photos, but they'll give them to People magazine. And um, right. yeah, it's, it's what it's there. It's very odd. This is the Baltimore County Police Department? Correct. Yeah. So she died. Apparently she died. It's the line right there. She died in the city and then drove over to the county. So the county took the police. But I don't know if you ever heard about how the city offered to help. The the police chief sent me a handwritten letter of Baltimore City. Tell us about that. That's interesting. Where they have like how many murders a day. I mean, the county has, I mean, this this was years ago. I mean, the county's gotten a little bit more, but nothing compared to Baltimore City, where people are just being shot all the time. But the the police chief several years back from Baltimore City offered his assistance, his department stands by, you know, my family and wants to help. And Baltimore County told him to butt out. Well, that sounds so stereotypical. Yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds so stereotypical. Again, if you're reading this as, as some screenplay, it would sound like, and I'm this is just me saying that this is what it sounds like. Baltimore, uh, you know, like uh, just r- riddled with violence, right? Just just ripe for for violence in the mid nineties, right? Uh, everything from you know gangland stuff to to the mafia. I mean, drugs, and then you have this hit style, and then the police are just like, "Hey, butt out!" You know, it it feel it's like a bad screenplay. It it is. I mean, and it's it's. <sighs> I mean, you don't hear good, good things about Baltimore. <laughs> I mean, sadly, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, did you guys see the keepers? Yeah. The keepers. Oh yeah. With, um, the, uh, Gemma Hoskins. Yeah. The nuns. Gemma, the... We literally just said her name and I, I just drew a blank. Yeah. Gemma. <laughs> did you? Yeah. How crazy was that? Right. I mean. Yeah. That's crazy. So I, I mean, and I just hear, I mean, I've heard of several other cases, you know, where people, have tried to deal with the police. I mean, that's the problem is there's no, like who polices the police, right? I mean, it's, it's, we're at their, it's like they have her case hostage. Right. Right. Well, that's so interesting because they have hundreds and hundreds of cases. Like why this one? Exactly. Like why, why are they not solving it? Like, I mean, that, that's what some of these reporters have said. It's like, it's like they don't want to solve it. Yeah. I just want to make a quick point of uh, something that you brought up earlier and I didn't want to forget about it and we can we can get back to the actual crime itself but I mean hearing you talk like this and all the frustration and then hearing you talk about your husband walking out of the room because it upset him that you were doing certain things it's not a cliche that when something like this happens it it's not only one victim it's it's a ripple effect that that's like yeah. dozens of victims and I mean Tim and I are about as far removed from this as possible. And it's even like getting, getting my anxiety going. So oh, wow. it's wow. this whole like ripple effect that happens. It is. It is. That's such a good point. That's wow. Well, I mean, we, we see, we keep seeing it over and over and over and it's so common that it just starts to feel like this, you know, cliche. And I just feel the need to reiterate it as much as possible that it's not just one person and it's not just, uh, immediate family. It just, it goes into, I mean, we, we just talked about how like, this is like, uh, could be this weird corruption thing and a, and a, and a, and a mistaken hit. It's, 
I mean, and it's been so long. Well, actually, so I wanted to talk more about that, um, the p- possible mistaken hit. Um, Jenny, I, I hadn't known after our first uh, conversation on that we aired on Missing Maura Murray, um, I hadn't known that your your father was a prosecutor. I had um, I either forgot that or, or didn't know until I watched Relentless with Kate Snow. But what, what do you think about that? Do you think there's any connection there? I, I, I think it's, it's a, it's, you know, I don't rule anything out. Um, I mean, he did, he spent years prosecuting drug and violent crime. And, you know, one our we had a neighbor across the street from us growing up that prosecuted somebody and, and, and he, um, when we were younger, I remember this always came, was kind of in my mind, but he was, the one of the the people that he prosecuted was was ah, it was like harassing the wife or doing some stuff that like you know I'll never forget about that like um threatening her or something there was something going on so i i like i said i don't i don't rule anything out i i um but you know my dad was he was a very kind gentleman but he did put people in prison you know lock them up uh have you know prosecute them so um, yeah. I mean, it's definitely an interest. I mean, there's so many angles to it. Right. She and her boyfriend and getting I, into I would, a fight. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I remember we spent some time on that, um, last interview, but I, I also think it's really interesting to, to the point of a p- possible mistaken hit that, um, the killer doesn't like go much faster than he just normally, it's almost like he's going about his business quite literally. Like he's not in a rush maybe because he knows he's not going to get recognized and connected uh, to Jody. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's not afraid cuz he's got protection. Yeah, I mean if I if I shot Lance and uh you know pe- people saw they'd probably be able to connect that cuz we know each other and spend time together, you mm-hmm. know, but if there's no connection there. Right. You wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily uh rush out of there maybe. I don't know. Like he seemed like he had to go over there and check and make sure his job was complete. Right. Cause exactly. Cause don't you think what I said, if he was trying to rob her, that he would have done it right in that first parking lot where there weren't, wasn't the 24 hour giant and the other people. The- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that there's a couple of different types of, or several different types of criminals. And if he's, approaching her to rob her and it goes wrong the first time i think that type of criminal who's just doing like a smash and grab right. would take off they, they they'd be gone they don't want to get caught also interesting point about um it being the hit and your father uh i would think though that if someone were to do that it would be a way to send a message and if your message if if you're at, if you're not claiming responsibility for the crime how how where's the message going you know, no one came forward and said, you know, consider that a warning. You know what I mean? Or that was for this guy that you put in prison. If you're not claiming responsibility for it, then the message is kind of moot. It's, you know, yeah. it's kind of silly. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a good point. But do you, without, I mean, would you definitely put robbery as not a motive? I mean, like, I mean, because I, I go through this, I can't tell you how many times in my head still all the time. I lay in bed at night, you know, and run through these scenarios in my head you know yeah Mm -hmm. would you rule out robbery or would you i don't know i mean was she was there any indication that there were maybe you know i'm not i'm not saying this in any way to disparage her but was there any talk of drugs was there anything about like could they try to be stealing some drugs or instead of the money and that's the thing. So, you know, and I, I don't, um, you know, and that, well, first of all, I have people say, oh, you shouldn't. Um, it, it makes me angry. I've had people come up to me. You shouldn't talk about um, the drugs or it being like a drug scenario because then people won't take it seriously. And it just upsets me. Um, you know, she, she definitely, you know, we both struggled when we were young in high school. And um, but for her. Um, she was an alcoholic, you know, she struggled with alcohol. I honestly, in my heart don't, and, and, and we had lives, we were li- not living together at the time, but did not believe that she was doing drugs. There was no drugs in her system, um, for years. I, I mean, I didn't know about her. I mean, felt like when she got out of high school, I mean, I know, um, 
I mean, I think maybe when she got out of the treatment, she smoked pot, but she never got into, you know, but it was, it was alcohol. I mean, she was, she struggled terribly with anxiety and she was just, it was like she was medicating herself and it was, it was so sad. I mean, she was such, just such a beautiful person and just struggled so, so deeply, you know, and, um, and her boyfriend, they both, I mean, that was their relationship. They just drank. And, um, it, so she was in a bar that was known. I mean, it was her local tavern where she felt comfortable. I mean, she never, she never really went out of her element. You know, she went to her work. Um, she had lots of friends. She went to this bar. Um, she also was also known that she really kind of had a crush on the owner. That's another angle to it too. Um, and her boyfriend didn't like her being there at that bar. Um, that, that it was known that at that I mean, you could get the bar was no, I guess like any other bar, you could get drugs there. So, so for her being so afraid, you know, as my mother would say, she was afraid of her closet, you know, to, to just go out in the middle of the night. And, and so this is my thing on the drug thing. I'm sorry, it's taking a long time. But like, if she was like, oh my gosh, my boyfriend, we got into a fight. It's the end of the world. You know, when you have that feeling where you just like, can't, you're, just devastated. I'll just go do drugs or something. Um, why not get it in the bar when she, you know, in during why in the course of the hours she was there, if she, if it was known you could get it there, why go in a, the middle of the night in a parking lot and get it from some stranger? That's the part that doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Does that make sense? So it was kind of an unconventional um, night for her. So, uh, I know she, she went to a bar that she was familiar with, but she was out pretty late and alone and bought alcohol. Um, which and, is, and was just, is odd. Yeah. Sitting in her car, right. For her to go, it is just, that is, it's unheard of for her. I mean, she didn't even like to drive in the snow. Um, she was afraid to live in Baltimore. She would say she was afraid she was going to get shot. She would say that she would tell my family that. So for her to, go sit in the middle of the night in a parking lot and, and talk to a stranger that approached her vehicle. I mean, it's just, none of it adds up. None of it ever. I mean, she would never do anything like that. She drove the, the janitor home. I mean, she had a heart of gold. She would do anything, but it's just almost like somebody put her up to all this or something. It's just, it doesn't add up. I know that there were some witness accounts that, uh, maybe a conversation had happened between her and the uh, the man in uh, what they described as uh, the, the camouflage jacket. Correct, yes. Do you know how long that conversation may have have taken place? I think it was a few minutes. There was, a, if that, um, she had made several phone calls in her call, in, from that phone yep. um, prior to that. But... Yep. Yeah, it wasn't from what I'm learning from the police. It wasn't that long. And then the uh, the the gunshot went through the driver, like her side, the driver's side rear window. So driver's side rear window, Correct. right into the back of the seat. And I believe it was a 38 caliber. Oh, that's interesting. What do you What do you know about that? Oh, I was just curious. Like, is that is that like a um, is that the type of weapon that a certain occupation would possess or someone connected to that occupation, like maybe uh, police or security or something like that, if it was like a standard um, issue or something? The the whole breakdown of this happening, like the bullet going through the driver's side rear window, it, it almost like plays out in my head as something was exchanged conversation or something uh -huh. and 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 you know tempers were triggered right. or a temper was triggered and it doesn't feel like it was planned okay. but it feels like after the fact the person had enough wherewithal to say i have to finish this and i have to be calm mm -hmm. which is really really interesting that someone could right. be calm in that situation after that happened and and it's it's mm -hmm. a fact because if if this person wasn't calm he wouldn't have continued uh, right. with the act. He he would have right. panicked and left, or he would have he would have shot uh, over and over into the car. Right, right. The fact that it started moving made him made him calm and realize I I have to continue this. I have to be smart about the the next few things I do. 
Right. So I think I think you're talking about a certain type of person. And I don't want to say like military or anything like that, but I want to just say like if this was some drug dealer, some like tweaking kid who who was up at quarter to four in the morning selling drugs probably isn't acting this way. But I'm not positive. Right. But you're right. Like you're making me think him being angry because like I'm thinking in my head as you're saying all this like, well, people just don't walk up and shoot people in Baltimore, but I guess they do. But I mean, in this scenario to have a conversation and then shoot, like you said, there, there must've been some sort of anger, something that there was a heated, something went on. Right. Like, I mean, in like a minute, like you don't just have a conversation and shoot somebody. Yeah. I want to hear more about uh, the conversation that she had with someone with the same uh, described jacket. So do you think it's it's likely she spoke to her killer in the bar beforehand? One of the persons of interest, so there was a there was a bartender at the bar who had a friend, the bartender's friend's friend said he saw, I guess they were all in there one day after Jody died and they saw something on the news and he said I saw Jody with this person of interest. So that was something that was like what the police tell me they were looking into. And, but then all of a sudden they're like, Oh no, he had the wrong person. That guy's a druggie. He had the wrong person. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, or, you know, he just had the wrong girl, but this guy was 100. I mean, cause I, that's one of the people that I went to meet in Baltimore. Oh, it is. Well, how did that go? I mean, he seemed, he could not be more, clear and sure that he knew this person of interest and that Jody, that was Jody who he saw. And, um, he just, you know, he describes sitting in the bar early on and seeing her picture. And, and the police told me they had interviewed him early on. That's one of the, I don't know how many different examples where he was never interviewed by them until I, got them to interview him. And then they said, oh yeah, we interviewed him. <laughs> they told me they had interviewed him way back when. Uh, that's frustrating. But that, but that was a lie. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, he, I mean, I met with, I mean, I, I met with him several times, had phone conversations with him. And I mean, he, he was not out of his mind on drugs, but they're telling me he's a druggie. I mean, and I know somebody that's out of their mind on drugs. Like, I'm, you know what I mean? I've mm-hmm. maybe they're just, I mean, maybe they're trying to to throw you off. Maybe they, maybe he actually is a good person of interest. Uh, well, no. Oh, oh, the other one. <laughs> oh, the, the the. I mean, the person of interest. I thought you meant this guy. Um, it's possible, but um, you know, and he's another one that I had because he was locked up, and I thought about reaching out to him, and and um, and then I heard he got out. So um, yeah. I mean, my mind's. I, I still have many plans. <laughs> of things that I, that I'm going to do, you know, as far as reaching out to people. And, and I mean, and, until they can solve her case, I'm, they're going to have my help on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying people's names. I'm just sort of trying to get information out there. Cause maybe somebody will hear something, something will click. Um, yeah. you know, they're saying like, I'm messing up the investigation yeah. and I'm like, what investigation? Um, because obviously there hasn't been a thorough one. There's no progress. If it was an investigation, it wouldn't have been sitting in the closet for years. And and then all of a sudden it's an open investigation when I file a lawsuit. Oh, whoa, it's an, it's an active investigation. Well, how is it active if it's in a closet? Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Well, yeah. yeah, they're just they just have that trap that they're ready to spring and along comes you with your billboards. Right. Is it is it is it an open investigation till I'm six feet under? I mean, like, exactly. how does that work? Like, there's no, what's, what's the rule with that? Like, how, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Like, when does, when does the, when does the line get crossed? When does right. the line get crossed between, um, you know, you know, now we're going, now we're going to allow you in right? Uh, because it's just, we've exhausted everything. But in the meantime, you're like, it's just been sitting in a closet. Yeah. Like, what, what were you really like a like were you 24 hour surveillance on one particular person of interest and, and no one knew? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Doubtful. I mean, and I find I find I mean, so many things. So I don't know how many years back I was doing an interview with one of the Baltimore stations. And so 
the bar, the Mount Washington Tavern was a place where a lot of local reporters would, they would have media night, you know, where they would go there after work. And so one of the cameramen who did one of my interviews, he said, you know, I talked to Jody that night in the bar for like 20 minutes. Like he, it's just the craziest thing. Wow. And yeah. And so, and apparently like she was sit at, for a while, she was sitting by herself, which is sad to hear about, you know, sitting alone by herself. And so the police never even interviewed him. I mean, and I'm thinking, how is that? How is that possible? Exactly. And, like, wouldn't and what, what was it that he did? He tell you anything that uh, that she said to him? I mean, nothing. You know, I think it was just like just talking. You know, it was nothing um, substantial. But the, but the point is you would think they'd go back and figure out, you know, they, they all knew her in there. She, she had her friend, her bartender friend that she would sit and talk to. Um, like, who is she talking to? I mean, they know these media people. Like it just, do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's just that I find so many yeah. different things that weren't looked into. It just makes me think that they, they really um, missed a lot of what else have they missed? Right. Yeah. And, and you, you said, pretty early on that this case just seems so solvable, especially early on. Exactly. We should have put the Boy Scouts on it in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. So, I mean, and like, so one of the calls she made when she talked to her roommate's boyfriend, I, you remember that one where she, you know, she, yeah. she so, so for years, I'm like, I, that just doesn't sit right with me though. He knows where she is in that parking lot. Um, Oh, well, he didn't drive. And then I'd ask later, what, you know, because I would just continue to ask, what, what did he drive? Oh, I don't recall what kind of car he drove. Oh, he didn't drive. Like it was, oh, it was like a never like, like what? Did he drive or yeah. did he not drive? And then, so yeah, so it, it, it came down to he didn't drive. Can you elaborate a little bit on that phone call for anybody who doesn't know what that is? She had a girl that, because she had a heart of gold that she moved in with her that she had waited to swim. And um, didn't have a place to go. I'm not really sure what was going on. Jody had her live with her and her boyfriend for a while. And then she moved out with her boy. Then eventually she, I guess, got into this relationship and was dating this cook at Fridays. She That was one of the calls she made. She called her, I guess it was their place. It was, you know, in the middle of the night and had a, and didn't talk to the roommate but talk to the boyfriend for two and a half minutes which is i think a pretty long time yeah long enough yeah yeah to know where are you what are you doing da, da, da. so so i find out this spring i finally get them to go back and talk to him 20 something years later and turns out he had his friend with him does that make sense so so he didn't drive but he's got a friend with him and you find that out 23 years later so, Jenny, what is the next billboard that you plan to do? It seems uh, you are uh, you, you said in, in the Kate Snow uh, special that you're addicted to these billboards. Uh, are you working on another one? I am. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to be putting another one, another one with my tip line that I have with my phone line. It's, it's still the same one. You guys know that I did that, that I started my own line for yep. tips. Yep. And uh, what what is that line? What's uh, What do people do if they have any tips? So they call. So this one is just, it says, do you know who killed Jody LaCornu? $100,000 reward. Um, and then with the tip line, it's 410-200-6284. Has the date March 2nd, 1996. And then the Caldor Giant parking lot. Just trying to put a little information um, out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, that might jog somebody's memory seeing seeing that information. Absolutely. Um, but I, I I still, I mean, if you have any ideas, I'm constantly like, I still want to do more. It's just uh, trying to figure out. I, I I've wanted to do one to the president, but my mother's like, I'll probably get shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know because I I mean I'm not like a political person, but it was, it's more like an attention seeking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what you're doing right now is pretty solid. You're uh, utilizing every 
corner of the media and uh and you've managed to um use that as a a, a weapon of choice for yourself I like for that. your justice i'm and, trying um, i mean i i i i i'm I'm just constantly like, what can I do next? You know, what can I get? That I think would, just yeah. more interviews, more yeah. more face uh, FaceTime, more making um, eye contact, you know, with, with everything. And that's just sort of a metaphor, right? It's just like, get your face in front of everything that you possibly can and your voice out there. And also make sure that er, that, that that Jody is humanized in everything. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I hopefully we can get to this question. I was, I'm curious what your relationship was with, with Jody. What was it like growing up with her? I think, I think talking about things like that is important. Oh yeah, I, I mean, we were inseparable. She was my best friend, and uh, I mean, from, from till till we were separated. When you know, when we went into treatment. They separated us. We were, we were together. I mean, we shared the same room, had the same friends. I mean, it was, it was like we were one, you know, um, yeah. we were known as the twins, you know, like we were, it's almost like, you know, the twins are coming over, you know, we always went to our friend's house together. Or, I mean, we were just, you know, my, my mother always dressed us alike, but as we got, got older, um, she, she was, she was always like, definitely like the more outgoing one. I was the shy one. And like I said, part of me's gone. And, um, and and I, I was just so so numb. I, I mean, I still am getting numb, and I can't. Um, it's like I can't handle it, you know. And um, but it, it's like my life is is in constant motion because I can't. Um, it's like I don't want to feel. I don't want to think. And and it's it's maddening, you know. It's like yeah. I feel like I can't even. Um, enjoy life like it, it's like it, it's it's a lot like i said about it it's just i don't know it's like i feel like i'm i don't even know how to describe it like i'm like a shell of a person or something like I'm just... well i mean i think you're describing it a lot a lot like people describe uh being you know addicted to uh alcohol or drugs where you not a day goes by where you don't think about this where you yeah. don't think about how how can i how can i you know, fill that void. Right. And there's a, you know, there's a void that, that it is. It's that, that was, you know, it, by no doing of your own was, was put on you. Right. Right. So, and, so I can, I can totally see that feeling like you, this is, this is something that you have that you can hold on to that you can find justice for. And, you know, right. a, a lot of people, I know you said you felt like a shell of a person, but a lot of people actually collapse under all that and, <sighs> you know, don't do all of this. Well, I mean, I, I definitely, um, I mean, I do, I struggle. I mean, I've, 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 I mean, you've seen, I mean, I'm pretty open about it. I've, I've struggled with depression and, um, I mean a lot and, and, and the anxiety and, um, you know, I mean, there's just days that I just, I, 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 I just make myself, I mean, I have three children, um, you know, they're the, you know, my husband, uh, my mother, you know, we lost my father to cancer and that was just like another really horrible, horrible time. And, um, but I don't know, I, 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 I don't feel like I'm living life if that makes sense. Like, I, I just feel like I'm, I'm kind of here and, and, um, like I, I, you know, I mean, just like the littlest things, like, um, like I, like having fun. Like I was like, I don't even, <laughs> I mean, it sounds so crazy. Yeah. Like, you know, um, like my daughter's like, let's go play in the tree. And I'm like, oh, like I just, it's like, I'm sad. Like I, I just, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm making any sense. Yeah. I, I'm like, I, I don't. Uh, your law was taken from you. You're 23 years old, you know, and all of a sudden. Yeah. And I look around and I'm like, just like, I, I just don't feel like all these other people, you know, I don't feel normal. Um, <sighs> It's, you know, now I, I, I apologize if I missed this somewhere, but do you ever go back to the parking lot and look at the scene? Yeah. You know, I could not go for the longest time. And, um, so I couldn't even go into Baltimore. I mean, just, yeah. I mean, until I just really got this drive. Um, but I do, 
I have, I mean, for lots of interviews and, um, in, you know, it was, it, it, it was definitely really hard, but like, I, I can like go completely numb, like, um, and just go places like there now. And just like, I'm not even there. Like, does that make sense? Like, um, just like, I know I got to do this, so I'm going to be there and just, just completely am not like present, you know? And that's like something my husband says a lot because like over time, um, you know, it's like, he's like, you're not even here. Like, I'm just, and I feel like I'm not like, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I feel like even like, I feel like with my children, like I, I was sharing this too with, when I was doing the interview with Kate Snow, like I just, like my daughter's talking to me and I'm like, I have no idea what she's saying. Cause I'm like, I'm gone. Like, I'm just, yeah. I mean, it's sad. It's, I want to be here, but like, I mean, and, and I can't like, I, I, I can't, I mean, I'm sitting still right now, but um, I mean, I can't even like, I can't sit still like all day. It's like, I'm either moving or I'm like passed out asleep. It's like, I, it, it's, it's weird. It's like, I can't be with myself. I can't think. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's totally understandable. That makes it, it's actually kind of refreshing to hear somebody say this. Yeah. I hate it. It, yeah, it feels honest, which, uh, you know, when we're doing this for so long, not a lot of people are that like flat out honest about something. I hate it. I hate, I hate living like this and, and, you know, the anxiety and, um, you know, and I isolate and, um, a lot (laughs) because, you know, and, and, and I get overwhelmed very easily and, um, you know, as far as, being a mother and a wife and, and I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm very good at beating myself up. Like, because like, you know, people, you know, like you were saying, like, you're, you're doing good, you're doing that, you know, but like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not like, I'm, but, um, like, cause I, like a lot of times I'm, I'm like really struggling inside. Um, but I, I just always get up and, and, and I'd say 90, whatever percent of the time I'm like smiling, you know, just put like a smile on my face, but, and just like, keep going, you know? Mm. Um, but you know, it's, it's like the letdowns, like, you know, too, with her case, like every time I do something, I think this is it, something's going to happen. Um, I'm going to get this call. Like I was at work today and, and my attorney called who still like, you know, who helped me with the lawsuit and, and I was like, oh my God, like my heart like stopped. Cause I was like, something's happened, you know, and it was nothing, you know, it was just him checking in with me about something, but it's just this up, down, up, down, you know, it's like, yeah, it's very, it's very discouraging, you know? And, and, and my mind, like I could start to be like, we're never going to find our killer. And it's like, I can't, I, I just can't like let myself go there, you know? And then it's the whole thing with the guilt with my family. Cause it's taken me away from my family. And it, it's just like, it's all of it. I mm. mean, you know, you've talked to all these people that have, are going through all this and you know, it's, uh, I don't know, but I think, you know, I found, I, I got involved with, I think I told you this Tim with, um, volunteering with hospice. And that's like been like a really great thing for me. I haven't been able to do, much since I've had to, um, work like, you know, a real job, but, um, like I got to go on Thanksgiving and that, that's just like such a great thing for me, like to be able to be with people and, um, the patients. And I mean, that's been like, cause I really like to help people and be there for people that makes me feel good. So that's something that makes me happy. So that's good. So, uh, if you were to give a little piece of advice to people who have been through something similar, similar, it would be, I would imagine, try to find something yeah that helps other people that makes you feel good and you can see a genuine uh result you can see oh a, yeah a, i mean a, if, you know like a tangible result of your actions right right and i and 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 that's like with every part of me i mean that's why i was open about my addiction and my eating disorder and and jody and i being as abused as we were young and i mean because i feel like so many people like have been through so many of those things. And, and if, if I can, um, you know, be open about it and talk about it and help people and maybe help somebody get help or something, you know, I mean, I don't know if I can, but yeah. you know, it, 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 that's, that's important to me, you know? 
Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely like going out and, and helping others and, and, and I'd like to be able to help other, I mean, some of the, I'm, I'm getting together. I've been talking with Eve Janice and some others, one of the reporters, um, that we're going to go, you know, try to work on some legislation, you know, with helping, we're going to call it Jody's law with like trying to help, um, you know, with the victims, um, with helping, um, with the police, with, with that there should be some laws in place about with cold cases and things like that. So we're, 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 we're getting together, um, this month and, and just try to figure do you, you know what I mean? Like trying to, so people don't have to go through all this. Like there should be some protocols or what, what I, I, I don't know the right words. Um, but I, I, I think it's, there should be some accountability for the police and, and, and just, it's just like, I just feel like they shouldn't be able to just get away with, and I'm not trying to, I mean, it sounds like I've been very negative about the police. I mean, my, I knew many police growing up because my dad was a prosecutor and it, it's just, it's just my hell that I've been through. And I, I would not wish this on anybody um, having to deal with this, you know, and if, if, if I can help other families n not have to, to do this, I mean, I mean, even the treatment, I mean, you're, you're, you have a, a somebody in your family that's murdered and, 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 and I go and meet with the police and their lawyer slams the door in my face and, and the prosecutor is just shitty to me. And I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. It really is. You, you know, you, you would think I was the criminal because I want to find out who shot my sister. Yeah, we hear that story a lot with other people, and uh, you're right. There does need to be some sort of protocol that's put in place because you can't just simply say, well, um, other cases come in and this one is falling down the priority ladder, so you know that it is what it is, and you, and you throw your hands up. I get it. I get that, that um, they're understaffed, and I get that there's a problem with crime, and it's not going to stop, but you can't just simply say, well, is what it is. You know, there has to be something in place. I mean, we, you know— we can we can find money to 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 drop a bomb on some country. Why can't we find money to to help in this situation? Yeah, and and you were just talking about this. You know, you don't know if there's this void inside of you. What that's gonna like is is bringing this killer to justice going to fill that? So there also has to be that other side of like the there needs to be some sort of oh, like, yeah. counseling involved with the whole has Absolutely. to be a whole spectrum of it, or else or else yeah or, or else you're yeah. just stuck forever. And and that's not that's that's not uh that's not right. That's not right to the victims and it they them and their families deserve a lot better. Oh right. Yeah. I mean they've never offered any sort of love or support or anything, you know what I mean? It's more like um the opposite. And um, yeah. you know, and I understand I mean I wanted to make that clear. Like I do not expect Jody's case to be more special than anybody else is, but I expect the the basics to be done, you know, the, 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 not that I, you know, I'm not a detective, but just when you see all these things that haven't been done, I mean, that's what's so discouraging and frustrating. Um, yeah. And, and absolutely like do, do, yeah, do your job. Like, you know what I mean? And, and if you don't want to do your job, let the family get a private investigator, yeah. you know, like if you're overwhelmed, then why can't you get outside help? Well, Jenny, yeah, I, your journey is, um, is, is heartbreaking and, uh, and we're here for you and here with you and let us know how we can help. Um, oh, you guys are wonderful. I want to, I want to meet you guys in person. Yeah. That's let's... my next, what's, what's my plan? That's, what I mean. that's great. my next plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's my All next right. plan. Yeah. Let's I'm working work on, on a that. thing. I'm also, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, we're, we're, we absolutely have to do that. Absolutely. We can, we'll just get our own like group with Sarah. Cause I want to meet Sarah. She's like the biggest badass on the planet. I actually don't know if the room will be able to exist with the three of you in there. I think, I think it's, it's going to be too, uh, <laughs> it's going to be too overwhelming. We should do a podcast with all of us. I think, that's, think? I think that's a dangerous idea. <laughs> no, I, I think it's great. I think that's a great idea. I think it would. I think it would be a good. I think it would be a good thing. I think just getting yeah, everybody absolutely. together. I think instantly, maybe ten cases will get solved. Yes. Just, just because we're all in the same room. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. I'm gonna plan it. I'm gonna put it all out right. there. <laughs> Love it. All right. And you yeah, know, you heard my let's... husband. I don't take no for an answer. <laughs> that cracked me up. Did you see that part? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> I get I get what I want. Well, thank you so much for joining us here, Jenny, on Crawl Space. God, thanks for putting a smile on my face. I really, I really, I, I admire you guys, and um, I think you're great. And I'm really grateful that you are talking to me and helping me, and it, it means so much. You have no idea. Like I was really speaking of like crumbling. I was not having a good day, and I'm I'm ending it really well. So thank you guys. Thanks to you guys. Thank you.